the next item is a motion in the name of the Honorable J.S. Malema. I call upon the Honorable Malema. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, EFF leadership, members of the House, fellow South Africans. Almost 400 years ago, a criminal by the name of Jan van Riebeck landed in our native land and declared an already occupied land by the native population as a no man's land. Van Riebeck, the first descendant of the Dutch to arrive in the Cape, will later lead a full-blown colonial genocide, anti-black land dispossession criminal project, arguing that simply because our people could not produce title deeds, this land that they have been living in for more than 1,000 years was not their own. Essentially, he was disregarding their humanity, treating them as part of the animal world. To him and many who would have come long after him, the Africans were less than human not deserving of land ownership. On this basis, the project disempowering Africans of the ability to call this place their land was initiated in blood and in pain. Millions ended up in the humiliated conquered township condition of being cheap and easily disposable labor. Cecil Rhodes, Paul Kruger, John Smart, General Herzog, Fairwood, Water even declared all labored on the Van Riebeck assumption that Africans are less than human. They all, one after another, assaulted the humanity of African, keeping them dispossessed of land as cheap and easily disposable labor. Since those painful days when the Koi of the Cape were defeated and conquered at the establishment of the Cape Colony, to the area of the 1,800 with expansion of colonial control into the hinterlands. The days of the Battle of Nome River in 1838 against the Zulu people, the Battle of Mariko River in 1837 against Mizilikasi in north of Transvaal, the attacks of Tababusiu of King Mushoeshwe in 1865, the village raids of Bavenda that led to a heroic resistance by King Makado in 1867, the capture and imprisonment of the Koi chiefs in Robben Island fighting for land in 1870 up to the Land Act of 1913. Colonial crimes against humanity of native population did not end there with the Land Act of 1913. They continued through the forced removals of the Group Areas Act that displaced millions of black people to live in prison camps we now call township. The so-called township is not a settlement of human beings, it's a prison camp. Those who came in power in 1994, carrying the popular mandate of our people to restore the dignity of African child by reinstating land to the dispossessed, forgot their mandate. They became drunk in luxury and glory, building false reconciliation without justice. It took the formation of the EFF 20 years later to revive the question of the dignity of our people in the need for our land. It took the arrival of the EFF in these chambers to return in the central agenda of human freedom, the need for the land that was dispossessed through a brutal crimes against humanity. The time for reconciliation is over. Now is the time for justice. If the grandchildren of Jan van Riebeck have not understood that we need our land, that over and above it is about our dignity, then they have failed to receive the gift of humanity. We do not seek revenge, though they caused so much evil in our land. We do not wish to for their suffering, though they caused so much humiliation of countless generations. All we want, all our people ever wanted, is their land to which their dignity is rooted and founded. Today, let us close this question once and for all. Let us unite and pay no one for benefiting from the crimes against humanity. 
Let us come together and agree on this noble, historic, and human call to expropriate land without compensation for equal redistribution. Many want us to debate food security and economic development, but how can we do so when we do not have the land? They want us to come to the table with their bosses and as beggars, because that is unacceptable. The ability to develop policies on food security depend on land redistribution, not the other way around. Those who hold the land labor on the false idea that to distribute it, we must first establish a food security program. No, we must distribute the land. Then we can all talk about food security program. We invite you to engage, not to pick up spears and guns. We invite you to come to the table and realize that nothing means anything for our people except their dignity in the land ownership. For a lasting peace, security, and justice, land must be expropriated without compensation for equal redistribution. We'd have failed those who came before us if we were to pay anyone for having committed a genocide. We cannot thank them for having killed innocent people who are fighting to protect their own land. Many people say people who came here, they were running away from their own problems in Europe, and our people welcomed them here in South Africa. It is not true. Why would you engage in a program to kill people who have welcomed you? Those who are saying we must pay for the land are actually arguing us that we must thank those who killed our people because those who did so, they did so with an intention of wiping out a black uh, generation. We must ensure that we restore the dignity of our people without compensating the criminals who stole our land. Those who continue to protect these crimes are themselves accused of crime because those who protect crime are criminals themselves. All of us must come together and say, enough is enough. Our people must get the land. We have offered the ANC our 6% to amend the Constitution, and that 6% still stand to the African National Congress. We want to say to the ANC, it is now an opportune moment since you have agreed in your conference to amend the Constitution. Anyone who says we, cannot expropri we can expropriate land without compensation, without amending the Constitution, that person is misleading us. Because if that was the case, the ANC would have long expropriated this land without compensation. So we need to amend the Constitution, and we must do so unashamedly. It is not unconstitutional to amend the Constitution. It is constitutional to amend the Constitution. That's why the Constitution makes such a, a provision. We must stop being cowards. We must stop egg working around the white minorities who are governed by the fear of the unknown when it comes to the question of land expropriation without compensation. The investors of this, in this country just want a policy certainty. Once we say we're expropriating without compensation, there is no investor who will leave the country. They will look at our policy and say, how do we continue to make money within the expropriated land? So those who don't agree will continue to ridicule our struggle because they never suffered the pain of losing land. Honorable they don't know what it, how it I means to lose land. Expired. So we're saying to the all political parties, particularly the ones that represent black people, today let it be the day of black unity in honor of Robert Subukwe. The Honorable the Minister of Water and Sanitation. I take this opportunity to congratulate the Minister for his new portfolio.